Welcome to Working in Teams, Health IT Teams, Examples and Characteristics. This is Lecture A. People have a need to work in teams. Probably today as never before, the value of teamwork is so important. It is critical for people in terms of being successful with their tasks, toward being accurate in what they surmise, and in delivering the best quality in what they do. It's probably more important in the healthcare industry as in any industry. In the healthcare industry, there's a paramount need to have the correct people in a team, around a table, to ensure that electronic systems meet the needs of the patient and all stakeholders in that environment. In the health industry, it's critical to have a team-centered orientation when designing or developing an application that will be implemented in any healthcare environment. The objectives for health IT teams, examples, and characteristics are to describe the characteristics of an effective team and work group, identify and differentiate roles of IT healthcare professionals in teams, describe the value of teams and the importance of collaboration for the IT professional in teams. In this lecture, you will learn to describe the characteristics of an effective team and work group. You'll be doing that in a number of ways. There will be some activities that you'll be involved in. You will also be looking at some basic and fundamental characteristics of teams that are offered from a review of the literature and by reviewing a variety of work settings. The health IT field is diverse and expansive. Healthcare is provided in a variety of settings like operating rooms, medical rooms departments medical records departments, indirect patient care settings, private practices, and in dentist offices, just to name a few. Each of these areas needs health IT to improve the quality, safety, and efficiency of the services they provide. This diversity and complexity of settings contributes to the expansiveness of the field of practice for the health IT professional. Teams and teamwork are critically important in health and healthcare. In a complex healthcare setting, many teams are simultaneously involved in the myriad of activities that are occurring at any given time. For example, at the same time that a surgical team is performing a complex surgical procedure, there are other teams that are readying the ICU bed that the surgical patient will be transferred into. The pharmacy team is preparing medications to be administered to the patient, either during the surgery or afterwards. The nurse managers are checking staffing ratios to make sure that there will be adequate staffing when the patient is admitted to the floor, and so on. There will be people from all across the spectrum of the healthcare environment who are working together to ensure the delivery of safe and efficient patient care. Teams are inherent in all aspects of life from the hospital to the grocery market to your favorite football club. We work together to accomplish a common goal. Take a moment to reflect on the kinds of teams that affect your day-to-day -day life. Consider teams that you have been a member of over the past several years. Later in this module, we'll come back to your experiences and we'll use your prior knowledge to build upon your current understanding of teams. You may be surprised to learn how similar the actions of a football squad are to an open-heart surgery team. How does this relate to Health IT? Health IT is not only a member of the team, it is also a mechanism for supporting the work of a team. This is why a deep understanding of how teams function and how Health IT can either hinder or help team performance is so critically important in the Health IT profession. We should start with basics, with the definition of teams. A team is defined by the Harvard Business Review as, quote, a small number of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose, performance, goals, and approach for which they hold themselves mutually accountable, end quote. Again, we can think of this as a football team scoring a goal or a nurse working with a patient and his family to ease the discharge process. 
Important features of team members include the ability for each of the members to clearly communicate and coordinate with one another. Yet there is a common thread that binds them to other members of a team. There are often sequential and interdependent tasks that are occurring, and a well-functioning team understands these distinct roles and how they all fit together. For example, during a cardiac arrest, the team members have defined roles, and while they are all working to save a patient's life, they may all be doing distinctly different things. It is in the coordination, the integration, or the synthesis of these activities that the team begins to function like a well-oiled machine or a choreographed dance troupe. A very well-functioning team almost becomes a single, quote, thing, end quote. For a team to arrive at this sort of high-functioning level, the team members must have shared norms. Getting to this stage requires an established set of ground rules and shared values. If the team is not all working together toward the common goal, or if a member of the team is following a different path, team performance is diminished. If we stop talking about football teams and ballet troops and move back over into the health domain, we will actually find that teams in healthcare, in general, are not that different in their idea and dedication to achieving a common goal. Drilling down a bit further and focusing directly on teams that make up health IT, we still see much commonality in this regard. At the same time, there are defining characteristics that differentiate one player from another, one practitioner from another, and one user from another. This is one of the reasons why teams that are assembled to, for example, define user needs for a new system in a small rural clinic have to have some sort of affinity or commonality with the people that they are working with. Just as you would not expect a 375-pound linebacker to understand the nuances of a ballet point shoe, you would not expect a pharmacist to design the workflow for a busy nursing unit. In discussing a team-based approach to the implementation of, or planning for, an EHR system, it is vitally important to have wide stakeholder participation. Most certainly, physician representation is needed. But what about the office manager? What about the billing clerk? Again, the concept of good representation on the team from the groups that will be affected is critical. In another example, how about planning for a new CPOE, Computerized Patient Order Entry System? Who might the members be? Well, of course, a good representation of who might actually order something in the system would be important. Is that just the physician? No. Think about who actually, quote, orders, end quote. Nutritionists order diets. Nurses order consults and nurse practitioners order all kinds of medications, and so on. Depending on the type of system, representation from respiratory therapy, nutrition, physical therapy, and occupational therapy are often needed as our administrative workers and managers. In other words, we need the expertise of different stakeholders on teams that are comprised to plan for or to implement health IT. These are the people who understand workflow and processes, and they bring great value to a team. This is not to say that a team should be overloaded, because a team that is too large becomes lower function. The point is, team composition for health IT should not be haphazard. It should be focused, yet inclusive. Beyond the clinical teams, which span from inpatient to long-term care, there are several other members engaged in health IT work. As utilization of health IT matures with the integration of systems and other clinical tools, software developers and medical device companies are forming new alliances and working groups. Medical devices like blood pressure cuffs or ventilators obtain and store a lot of important data used for medical decision-making. Integration with the EMR has become almost expected. Beyond integration, quality improvement efforts are seen across all organizations. Health IT is often utilized as a mechanism to improve quality data collection, workflows, reporting, and decision-making. 
Finally, the regulatory and oversight teams are implementing compliance programs. These work efforts are often requiring dynamic teams with broad skill sets from technology, medicine, public health, and epidemiology. Teams are often viewed in a three-stage system that includes the steps of input, throughput, and output. An input can be thought of as the team's resources, such as the team members, any technologies that support the team, and any information that the team needs at the start of a specific project. Throughput, the second stage, is the process that the team engages in to reach their goals and tasks. Outputs, the final stage, are the actual deliverables that the team creates and develops to meet the mission operatives, in other words, the product that they came together to achieve in the first place. Let's apply this framework to a health IT perspective. Airline passengers often develop DVT, or deep vein thrombosis, from prolonged periods of sitting. The same condition can occur in hospital patients during extended periods of confinement. The hospital staff was charged with creating a plan to reduce deep vein thromboses in the hospital environment. A diverse team was formed to investigate the current process of assessing and ordering preventive measures via the deployed EHR system for high-risk DVT patients. The team members gathered, shared all the information they had about the DVT issue and discuss the issue in great detail. Many different perspectives were shared and team members learned from one another. The ground rules that were established early on by the team allowed for everyone to share and be heard in a respectful fashion. In this process of, quote, teaming, end quote, they realized that there was a way to improve on the way that orders appeared in the EHR that could potentially impact the occurrence of DBTs. Feedback from the nursing aide on observations made in regards to bed positions was a particularly valued contribution, something pointed out by the chief of surgery in his final report. Because of the team interaction and contribution of perspectives, a specialized automated order set was created in the EHR that prioritized the presentation of certain interventional orders for patients deemed to be at higher risk. The rates of DVTs declined, and the team continues to work in a quest to reduce the numbers down closer to zero. There is a great deal of literature and research regarding teams. One of the more commonly accepted ways of dissecting team characteristics is to cluster them into three areas. Organizational structure, individual contribution, and the actual processes that the team utilizes. We're going to look at each of those areas in more detail in the next several slides. Here is a grid that lays out the three structures that are characteristic of effective teams and some of the detailed elements within each. We are going to discuss each one in turn, starting with organizational structure. As can be seen on the slide, effective teams have an organizational structure that has a clear purpose, appropriate culture, and a specified task. Clear purpose is pretty straightforward and easy to understand. The team is chartered and there is a defined mission and a clear purpose of why they have been assembled in the first place. Their tasks are specifically linked to the kinds of deliverables that are required to achieve the mission. The culture is appropriate to achieve the mission. There are distinct roles for team members and there is defined leadership. An organizational structure that supports these aspects is one with a higher probability of creating successful teams that achieve the goal. In taking this specifically into health IT, 
one could easily apply this structure to the prior DVT example. There was a clear mission and purpose, which was to reduce the occurrence of DVTs. The culture supported the inclusion of multiple stakeholders, and all contributions were respected and valued. Processes were examined and observations recorded by different members of the team who were actually seeing the same process from a variety of perspectives. The leader of the group, who was chosen for her reputation for seeing the big picture and being a disciplined spanner, did an excellent job of leading the team to the goal. It was in digging out all of these perspectives and dimensions that the solution was able to be collaboratively arrived at. Then, when it was built into the automated process, the stakeholders all felt like they had played a role in improving patient care. These aspects, as part of the organizational structure, are critical contributors to success. This concludes Lecture A of Health IT Teams, Examples and Characteristics. We will continue to discuss these characteristics in Lecture B. In summary, we define teams and we discuss the characteristics of teams. The point was made that it is important to understand the characteristics of an effective team in complex healthcare enterprises and to facilitate their formation. Moreover, the importance of an understanding of team dimensions and multiple stakeholder involvement was put forth as critical to planning for and implementing successful health IT.